Okay, so here we've got a graph and we can see at the beginning you have 1.6 with that particular unit for the very first instant. When you have 3 minutes pass, you have 0 0.8. When you have 6 minutes pass, you have 0 0.4 remaining. When you have three more minutes, which is nine minutes in total, you have 0 0.2 remaining. And so that is half-life. To be honest, I don't think you need to know anything more than what you have learned in IGCSE. So let's just double check it with the syllabus here. So the relevant thing that will be the definition of half-life and also the idea of background radiation. And here uh, we can also see determining the half-life of a nuclei from a decay curve. So again, uh, without showing you three minutes just now in the example, you can locate starting from a certain point and try to see how or what time it takes to reduce to the half quantity. So that is how you can determine half-life from the graph on the curve. They also specify that you only will be required to solve problem on the radioactive decay using integral numbers only. So uh, don't worry, you won't be asked to solve uh, algebraically on a problem. That only will be asked in the HL topic. Okay, so here's a definition of the half-life which you may want to copy to your booklet in case they ask you. Um, one thing that you may not fully understand is the idea of activity. So activity is just a usual word you may use. However, in physics, it refers to how much the decay would be. So if you uh, go and look at this graph, uh, you can see the y-axis is using A. A means activity. So how much, uh, how many, or how fast the decay activity would be. And generally, we just call it activity. Earlier, at the very beginning, the graph that I show you was in N. N is referring to the undecayed nuclei, the number of undecayed nuclei. So, yeah, that's the difference. However, when they try to be plot on the graph against the time, you can see the shape is exactly the same. So no matter which graph you're looking at, uh, you can also deduce the half-life like usual. Down below here, you can see uh, something called the background radiation and Again, you have learned it in IGCSE uh, in the background, as in from the uh, universe, like in outer space, or it could be the natural rock, or it could also be the aviation tower, etc. Uh, there will be background radiation also. So uh, that may affect the measurement when you do measure a radioactive experiment. And so here, you can see on the graph, on the left hand side you can see it doesn't actually emerge to zero because usually if you try to think about uh, the half-life itself it, it actually goes down quite quickly right so the thing is it's not really because it takes long time to decay it's actually there's a background radiation that contribute towards your measurement so that's why you can see the line is kind of offset above the x-axis. So that's why um, we have to convert the graph into the right hand side that one by subtracting the background radiation which is I think about 40. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's written here as 40. So that's why you can see you can offset the whole thing and therefore now you can measure the activity uh, just purely from the source that you are doing. All right, here are three examples from the test book. They are really, really simple. So just read it by yourself. I'm not going to explain it because they are self-explanatory. Afterwards, go and check out question 10 and also question 11. Try yourself and I'll explain to you. Pause the video now. A few moments later. Okay, question 10. Uh, there are two approaches I can tell the first one is less elegant but probably quite effective uh, in general so you know half-life is three minutes and it starts with 32 and how much will be left after 18 minutes so you just have to come and try to draw this if this is in an mc question then that's something you can do uh, 32 mg and then after one half-life 
So three minutes become sixteen, and then become eight, and then become four and become two. Right? Just draw a few, and then this is three minute. This is three minute. This is three minute. This is three. And then now there should be three times four is twelve. So not yet. Actually, you know there are six half life, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and then six. All right? Count the arrow. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so that should be 18 minutes. So this is one way you can do, uh, but then this is not going to give you a very good presentation if you are trying to show other people, uh, oh, how you reach the answer 0 0.5 by the way the unit is mg, then that's not going to be too good. A more elegant way to do it is to use mathematics, of course, to present. So first of all, you want to find out how many cycle of half-life it has passed through. So what you have to do is you got 18 minutes in total and divided by the half-life period, so which is three minutes. So in total, there will be six half-life that it will go through. And so in this case, uh, we can express the n 18 that means the number that is remaining after 18 minutes will be the original one, 32 times 1 over 2, because uh, you, or you can write divide 2, right? This is what happened to the number after one half life pass. And so you have 6, and therefore you can do 2 to the power of 6. So uh, you can try to take advantage of this, and then it can help you to present the idea much more easily. And so eventually, of course, the answer will still be 0 0.5. You could also double check the answer easily by using calculator as well. Question 11, first part asking you what it means by activity. So simply, like I said, it is the rate of decay. How fast uh, is decaying? Part B, use a graph to estimate the half-life of the sample. So here you got a graph of the activity, and then uh, we, to be honest, we don't know whether there is background radiation or not. Um, if the question didn't say so, or you can see the data is not very really clear, then we assume there's no background radiation. Okay, and so um, I think what we could do is just by looking at initially, you got 400, and so we look at 200, and that is correspond to four minutes. So, well, I guess that is four minutes then. Part C, uh, on the graph, extend the curve. So if you have printed it, then you just draw on top of it. Um, up to 12 minutes. So again, uh, similar to uh, what I usually remind you in physics when you draw a graph, like this one, try to locate some point and anchor them. That means you, you, you point it out, right? So that before when you try to draw the whole line, it's easier to make sure you pass through those points. So since you know four minutes is the half-life, and so obviously eight minutes is another half-life, which you draw from 200 to 100. So that means this point. Okay, and up to 12 minutes, you will draw from 100 to another half, which is 50. Okay, so this is a line you need to draw through and try to make it smooth. Okay, if I could do like 16, uh, something around here, then it should be something like here. So I guess I, I'm trying to imagine, so around, I don't know, it's 12.5, right? So if I really have to extend it, then I could kind of, yeah, kind of imagine this is going to connect. Yeah, but then actually 12 minutes will be enough. Part D, the wording is a bit hard to understand. So what, what basically it means is, uh, initially, X is radioactive, so X is undecay. You can remind yourself that. And Y is the one that is decayed already, right? the product basically. At the beginning, there's no decayed particle or element inside. And determine the time when the ratio of Y to X is 7. So Y over X is 7, means uh, 7 over 1. Right, that means y is decayed. Okay, decayed over undecayed is 7 over 1. So I think that means you drop, because in total you have 8, right? 7 plus 1 is 8. That means you only remain 1x 
of the original. So you had 400 initially, so 400 times 1 over 8 is simple maths, right? Is 50, am I right? So then, then wait, then that is simply 12 minutes then. Am I right? So I think that is the answer, 12 minutes for part D. Here comes a new challenger! Okay, on the booklet here, there is question 12 and question 13. And to be honest, they actually have nothing to do with radioactive decay. Well, it may look like to be, but then actually no. It's related to linearization that you learned in chapter 1. So take it as a challenge to see if you still remember how to do it. Uh, pause the video and I'll show you the explanation. Pause the video now. A few moments later. Okay, so the question already told you that the relationship is this one. While d log is the unknown, and a set of data, dependent variable and independent variable c and d are given. So outline how to get a straight line. So yeah, okay. So first of all, uh, you have to rewrite, because this is proportional only. So you have to add the constant k to it. You can add it outside or add it inside. It doesn't really matter. So um, maybe doing it inside will be easier. So this is how it look like with equal sign. And so eventually we want to get C and D on each side, but then you, you would want to get rid of this and try to get this into a strict line formula. So that is Y equal to MX plus C. All right, so we could put the square into the other side, become square root and become K over D plus D log. I think we can move it like this, D plus D log on the other side k divide root c and so we could also make d let's take d as to be the y could we minus d log okay so in this case that we basically make this as y this as x and this is like the y intercept intercept and then uh, k would be the slope if we plot a graph of d against 1 over root c yeah the slope will probably be something like k while the y intercept is going to be negative d log so yeah this is a straight line Okay, next question is similar. You have got this equation and eventually you want to have i and x to be the two variables for x and y. Uh, the constant is mu and hopefully you could deduce, I, I guess eventually is something related to the slope or either y in a set. So for this one, obviously, uh, when you see this, the first thing you should think of is using the natural log. So uh, let's take natural log on both sides. Okay, I'll try to do it slowly. So now it's just add the natural log on both sides and then uh, we can split the right hand side because it is multiply. This I log multiply with this whole thing. So it will become plus when you split it. And then obviously natural log with this will become one while the index you move it outside. I hope that's what you learn in maths. Natural log i log natural log i. Okay, so I think that's it, right? Because again, you want to compare that with y equal to mx plus c. So y could be this, x is the x here, same x here. So mu, I mean slope is negative mu, and natural log i log, remember this is a constant. All right, so that's why it could be uh, C. So a graph that looks like this, natural log I, X to be X axis. And then you should have, I don't know this is positive or negative. Let's assume it's uh, positive, then you should have a negative slope, I guess. So probably something like this. Then the slope, 
it's going to be negative mu. So using the slope value, you can determine um, the value of mu and also the y-intercept is going to be natural log i log.